Hello, thank you for coming. Happy Thursday. Uh, I'm Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. And it's a time where we can get together and relax and craft. We can work on a project. And I work for on the project for about an hour in the evening here. And we work through projects, uh, all the whole process, all the way from picking fabrics, uh, to the last stitch. So uh, today we are going to continue on one of our projects. It is the Splendid Sampler 2 Quilt Along. You can find out more info at thesplendidsampler.com. Uh, there's a hundred different quilt blocks by different designers in this project. And today is new uh, Block Thursday. So we have 20 free blocks uh, before the book comes out and then we'll be doing the blocks from the book. Uh, and uh, today we're doing a catnap uh, from Nicole. Uh, Nicole's from uh, follow Nicole from Follow the White Bunny. If you guys are familiar with with her online, she does the cutest little embroideries. I definitely suggest checking out her work. Today we're gonna do this adorable little kitty cat. Uh, so this is just so funny to me because for the Splendid Sampler one, we made it through the whole splendid sampler without a single kitty block. So out of all the designers, 80 plus designers uh, in quilt land, no one did a kitty, which was shocking. <laughs> so, so we got a kitty this time around. So that makes me feel good. <laughs> so, all right. So tonight we are going to transfer this design onto our fabric and we're, we're going to start stitching. And uh, I thought we would maybe do the applique pieces, but I was reading the instructions and she leaves the applique till after the embroidery. So I, that, that feels different to me. So I'm gonna give her way a try just to see how that goes. And I might also stitch this without an embroidery hoop. If you checked out uh, her text, text in here, she talks about, Nicole talks about uh, not stitching with a hoop and it makes it easier potentially for the running stitches. And I know with a stem stitch, which is what she does the kitty with, uh, that can sometimes be a little bit easier without a hoop as well. So we might just go hoopless for this. Uh, so first we'll transfer the design, pick some colors. I want to pick, pick the fabrics for the applique already and uh, we'll take it from there. We'll start stitching. So thanks again for joining me. I'm gonna flip you around. Let's get going. Okay, I got my light table all ready to transfer the design. You don't need a light table. Uh, I did put a link to to them in this post if you're if you're interested. They're actually these days they're super cheap. Back in the day they were hundreds of dollars. <laughs> now they're like twenty dollars for like the thinnest big light table. It's kind of crazy town. All right, so for my background, I'm gonna do white, just because I, I put that rule in place for me that uh, I'm gonna use white for, for my background. Whenever there's a background, um, it's gonna be mostly white. And that's what she did here too, so I got a good guide here. So I think I have a, enough out of this white piece yet. Yeah, we should have plenty, so white background. And yes, Bonnie, it is color day today. So the another rule that I put in place for myself for this quilt is I'm gonna keep the quilt pretty light and tan like this. But I did want throughout the quilt teeny tiny sparks of bright color every once in a while. And uh, just to limit myself to make sure, because I, I, my, my um, tendency is to lean towards fabrics like this, but I wanted to give myself a challenge um, for this, this quilt and not immediately do all brights. So I am limiting my use of these to every five blocks. So I'm not allowed to use my bright fun colors except for every five blocks and then still in a limited capacity. So I think, um, I think today's the day, this is block 15. So this will be our third block that I put some color into it. And this is actually popping out at me right away. Um, it's like this kind of reproduction 50s fabric. Uh, and, and you know, with a kitty that might look awfully cute. So yeah, so uh, maybe, 
I don't know, maybe I'll just do one bright color one. I don't know, maybe, maybe I just do this and then the other ones are kind of tan. I don't know. Let's see what this looks like. Because I, I do want, when I do add color like this, I do want it to stand out in the quilt a little bit. Uh, we could do, we could do the kitty kind of a fun color too. So uh, let's see, let's see what else we got going on here. I just want to check this out, what it would look like with some of my tan colors. You know, we could do, this is our pretty normal tan color. Ooh, these two colors are pretty. That's nice, nice and soft and pretty. Um, we get another one of those tans in here. I'm just kind of laying out, I like kind of seeing what it looks like on the piece. So I'm kind of laying it out. Um, you know, there's one here and one here, one here. So I'm kind of going dun, 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 dun. And I'm actually thinking this is looking kind of awfully cute, right? Like this. It looks really soft still, but I do have that one little pop of color. And it's not so exaggerated. Like I think if I, you know, you know, that's pretty too. But this is, this is maybe way more bold. This is, I think, a little bit more subtle, which I kind of like. Okay, so you know what? I'm just plain digging this. I, I like how soft these are, and I think the softness of this goes with it. And actually, now that I'm looking more closely, it has like these pretty flowers that are kind of a tan color. Uh, they kind of go right with, with this tan, so I like that. And then maybe we do um, for the... You know, we got, we got these too. We got all these fun shapes. Those could be brighter, brighter colors as well. So, you know, we have a soft color here, but maybe this little flower bloop, that could be, you know, that could be a bright pink up here. And then this could be like, you know, that could be a nice teal or something down here. So there's still opportunity for color, um, but I think we do it in these two spots here. And then I think we keep, let's keep these lines kind of neutral. Um, I don't know how neutral I have, what I have for, for floss. So we could see, actually, you know what? Why don't we do that right away too? Let's, let's just keep picking colors. Let's just add floss to the mix. So I have, uh, like last night, I have this little bin here um, that I just throw all my scrap floss in. And that's where I'm just gonna pull, pull my floss colors from. And you know, this gray is popping out right on me. We use this for the bird feet in a, in a, oop, oh, lost the cover of my fabric. Um, we use this in the bird feet of, uh, I think block, I don't know, 12 or something. I think this might be a good outline or not outline, but a good, you know, good for these little seams. Like it'll just keep everything real light and subtle still. So let's, let's do that for our, our rows. Dropping everything. And, uh, now I want to do some bright, fun colors for these. Yeah, this square is embroidery and this square is embroidery. Uh, these, these three are applique. Okay, so we need a fun color here and for up here. Here I kind of think like a bright pink because it'll bring this color in. Not a bright, bright pink, but a, something a little brighter. We have this yellow, that's pretty bold too. Yellow goes with the rest of our quilt. Maybe we put yellow. That's pretty, this is maybe a little too bold. I don't know how I'm feeling about that. Okay, so here's some pink. We could do super bright pink. Or, you know, maybe, you know, that's where I lean towards, but I'm, I'm still trying to keep the subtlety of this quilt, so. Maybe, maybe a paler pink. I think this kind of matches a little bit better. Let's, let's use that instead. Um, I, don't, I think I probably need more than that. So let's just grab a whole pile off of here right away. Well, yeah, I'll just pull this off. Yeah, I might not be able to get it all out here really quickly. All right, that's probably plenty. So I'm gonna just trim that. I know I, I don't have my cone of floss up here anymore. Okay, so I like this. Let's do this pink for up top here. So this is that, gonna be that flower. 
and uh, I think this yellow is a little much. This is looking pretty to me. I like this. Um, but we do need we do need something here. I do have this kind of orangey bit. Oh, man, everything is looking so bold because um, I'm my fabrics are so subtle. What about this this yellow here? Maybe we just do this. I think I think we're gonna just do do that and be done with it. All right, just unwinding whatever here. I think this will probably be plenty. I can always get more. And we still have the kitty, and I, I have this brown that's kind of popping out at me here. Um, it's kind of kind of like a cat color. We're looking like a little mess here, aren't we? This is maybe a little, little bright and um, darker. I think a bit darker than the rest, so I think that might stand stand out a little bit. Yeah, and then, yeah, exactly, Gretchen. So it is kind of um, Chad. <laughs> Chad is like a uh, he's kind of like a a black and white tiger kitty, but the, he's got a hint of this brown in him. So I think. I don't know. I think I got to dedicate this guy to this this color to Chad a little bit. <laughs> Chad the cat. So uh, I think I think we got something here. So I I think I'm gonna stick with with this. And uh, um, you know what? Just for the sake of getting my fabric pieces, um, just having them ready for later, I think I am gonna prep these applique pieces. I think I'm just not going to attach them yet. So I'll get them all trimmed and cut. I'll do like the first half of the applique. I just won't do the part where I pull off the back and then stick them on. Uh, we'll just, uh, we'll do that part once we're done with the embroidery. But I think let's get the actual um, pieces done. So I, I think I'm gonna even do that before before I trace my design here. So like right here, here, and here are where the fabric pieces go. And we got them here. These are reversed um, for, they're already like pre-reversed for us uh, for the, for the uh, raw edge applique look. So uh, what I'm gonna do first, oh, you're gonna do a Calico Kitty, Leslie. Oh, that'll be fun, so you'll get a change do like a shift of colors throughout and stuff. That'll be neat. Ooh, and then we got these little, little uh, whiskers. We'll do, maybe we'll bring the pink back in for the whiskers or something. Um, all right, I'm, I'm not sure about this gold that I picked down for down here. So I don't know, we'll have to see, we'll have to do, well, um, I'll do the lines first. And man, you know what? I really wanna put these, these applique pieces on first, but in the instructions, those aren't first. In the instructions, the, the um, th the embroidery is first, so I'm gonna try and hold off. But I am gonna make these pieces because then I can at least lay them on the design, um, just so I can compare, see what colors look like next to them and stuff. But all right, let's let's prepare these pieces. So I got them right here. I have my I'm gonna use my steam a seam two again, and. Let's, I'm sure I have a piece in here. Yep, there we go. Ooh, yeah, this will be perfect. So I'm gonna trace these on um, just with a pencil. Let's do the big one first, because that one that one might be harder to fit somewhere. So you can use a light table for this, but you know the steam a seam. Most most uh, uh, fusible webs like this are pretty see through. Uh oh, I might be out of ink here or not ink, but pencil lead. Okay. Trace. I'm gonna get these just as straight as I can freehand. I'm not gonna worry about using a rotary cutter or anything with them. Okay. That's one piece. There, this fits in here. I want to um, leave a uh, enough uh, space so I can have like at least like an eighth inch or so, or si at least a sixteenth of an inch um, little seam allowance to these, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cut them on the line immediately. 
I'm going to cut just off of the line first. Okay, let's get that third one. It just doesn't fit down there. All right, we'll go that way. And I think she, Nicole, only used one strand of red of one strand of the embroidery floss when she was stitching. So that'll be kind of fun. We'll get a real thin line. Uh, I'm not going to uh, use a stabilizer behind my fabric, although maybe that would be a good idea. Uh, I don't have one of those available. I don't usually do that, Diane. I usually um, go without, but so many people suggested that, suggested that I think one of these times I'm going to do that. Oh yeah, so right here it does Wait, light, wait, no, lightweight fusible web. That's not for the back of the embroidery. We're using it um, for, for these quilt pieces. Yeah, this, this time I'm not, um, Diane, but one of these times I will because a lot of people do like putting a stabilizer on the back of their embroidery. It helps hide the stitches a little bit and it get, just gives it a little sturdier base to stitch on, but um, I'm not gonna do that this time. All right, let's cut these guys out. Let me grab a paper scissors quick. Okay. So I'm gonna cut these uh, not exactly, not right on the line. I'm gonna leave myself a little, like a 16th of an inch all the way around them. That's so that later, once it's stuck to the fabric, at that point, then we'll go right on the edge. So we get like a perfect nice edge. Uh, Mary, I don't really ever use stabilizer. I think, um, I think why people are attracted to use stabilizer is, well, first of all, if your fabric is really, really flimsy, then it might be helpful. Um, but I think a lot of people like using it because then when you're like jumping from one area on the back to the, like another area, you don't see that big jump of thread like through your fabric as well. So I think that's the big reason why people like using it. I actually, I do actually use an embroidery stabilizer often, but I use it for the front. So I use it for, um, I, I use like that uh, sticky Fabri-Solvi, or it's called Stick and Stitch. I use that uh, to print my design on, and that gives me a little sturdiness while I stitch. So that, that helps stabilizes um, the piece a little bit. So I guess I do use a stabilizer. I just don't use it for the purpose of getting it on the back. All right, so let's uh, see what is what. I think this guy is the top one. So when we when we re reverse these, yeah, and then this is our big our big bottom piece. Yep, and then this is where does this one go? This is the side one. So okay, we go da 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 da. Okay, so um, this steam a seam has sticky uh, a sticky side to it, which is great which means I can just stick this on before I iron it. So, all right, let's, Ooh, oh, here we go. I'm like, haven't I used this fabric yet? And I have up here. All right, so I'm going to uh, remove, oh wait, how did we do this now? Oh, I think I might have, wait, no, no, I didn't. We're fine still. I just uh, undid a, the opposite side first. I should have drawn on the other side, I think. I get confused with this steam seam a little bit yet. But all right, I am taking the back side off of here and I am going to stick it onto this fabric on the wrong side of the fabric. You can fussy cut if you want. Um, so now I'm gonna cut right on the line and then when I flip it, we'll be will be the right side, and and I'll have I'll be in the right spot right there. And actually, you know, in a normal piece, 
um, you would press it right now, or a normal embroidery stable or a, a fusible, you'd press it right now. I don't need to because I'm using this steam -a seam too, and the steam -a seam too has like a sticker component to it. Uh, but I think maybe I will give it a little press just because I know I'm going to leave it here for a little while. So um, let's just do the other two quickly first, and then then I'll press all of them and then cut them all out. Oh, this is so pretty. This is like a neat vintagey looking vintagey looking fabric. I think I drew on the wrong side, but it's going to work either way. Is the yellow graph side you drew on the plain side? Um, I drew on the yellow graph side, but I think I was supposed to draw on the plain side. That's why I'm still a little, this is, I haven't used the steam -a seam too very often yet. Uh, this is my first project, the Splendid Sampler 2 that I'm using it. So I'm a little confused by it because usually with, um, usually with, fusible, one side's exposed, and then the, the other side is the paper side, so you know automatically what side to trace on. So I'm just being, I'm just making sure that this is the reverse. I'm making sure I'm putting the reverse shape, you know, the angles over here. I'm making sure I'm putting the reverse shape onto the reverse side of the fabric so that when I flip it and I'm on the right side, then this shape flips also, and then we'll be, we'll be in the correct side. So I think maybe I was supposed to draw on the other side, but either or, it's going to work with this, this steam -a seam Okay, last one here. Yeah, we'll give these a little press and then I'll cut them out. Okay. Okay, wait a second. I'm just super confused with this one, though. Oh, wait a sec. Ah, that's where I messed up. Wait, this one's over here. Oh, you know what? I think I, I did two of the same one here. Whoops. Okay. There we go. I did a, I did a, that one twice somehow. <laughs> like, this doesn't feel right. Okay, let's, let's try that again. I'm going to just retrace it onto here. Oh man. Gonna be one of those evenings, huh? Can I even fit it on here? I think so. I think we can do it. This doesn't seem right. <laughs> Were you guys yelling at me this whole time and I, I just missed it? Yeah, I traced the Wrong one twice. So, all right, now let's trim that one just so I don't get messed up. Oh, you tried to warn me. I know, right? It's funny. Like, so there's like a big delay on um, when I can see your comments and when you write them sometimes. So sometimes I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. And sometimes I just miss them, miss them completely. But there we go. We're, we're back in town now here. Okay. <laughs> So now let's unstick this side. <laughs> exactly, Robin. Uh... Okay. We got it. We would have figured it out eventually. <laughs> or I would have figured, you guys figured it out right away. I would have figured it out eventually. Well, I did. It's eventually right now. Okay, now let's give these a press and uh, we'll trim these out for real. So, all right, let me um, get the iron heated up quickly. So uh, uh, I could just trim these out right now because like I said, with the steam -a seam, it, it's like a sticker. But because I am, I'm not gonna put these on my actual fabric quite yet, I'm, I, I just want to make sure that it's stuck on there. So uh, let's heat it up. Uh, you know, while we're here, let's also press our background fabric. I kind of jumped ahead. I didn't even prep my prep my fabric yet. I wanted to get right to the applique. So let's just, uh, while this is kind of warming up, give this a little press. I mean, this is going to get all piles of wrinkly once we uh, once we get stitching, but you know, it's nice to 
trace onto something that's slightly flat at least. It's getting pretty wrinkly though, but we've, um, from this one little half yard, I think it was a half yard of white, we've done our whole quilt with this white so far. So it's, it's, uh, it's lasting for us, this white. I got a whole pile more though. All right, now let's give that a little press. Just like a few seconds, maybe five or so. Oh, I must be getting excited about getting camping. Yeah, I have not packed for camping yet. Um, <laughs> so I got to do that tomorrow when I wake up, make sure that we have everything for camping. I got to figure out what I'm going to wear to the wedding yet too. I'm so bad. I'm waiting so long to, usually I figure out that um, way earlier. What am I going to wear and what I'm going to, what am I going to wear if it's chilly and got to figure out all that. And then we'll, we'll drive, drive there. I think it's, um, it's a few hours away, so it'll be a bit of a drive. Oh, you love your iron like this? Yeah, so this is that cordless, that cordless Panasonic cordless iron. Oh man, one of my most favorite crafty purchases, recent crafty purchases for sure. It is amazing. Okay, let's trim these puppies. Uh, now I'm gonna get the nice, the nice fabric scissors out. Uh, so now here's the point where we're gonna cut on the line uh, Tracy, I think you're supposed to draw on the uh, um, other side. I'm not quite sure. The, the instructions are a little confusing, but honestly, I don't think it actually matters because both sides are sticky and both sides are, um, you take the paper off of both sides in the end anyway, so I don't think it really matters. I'm not quite sure what, what it's supposed to be. I'm going to just trim this out first just so I don't have any residue on my remaining fabric and then it's easier to cut without um without all that extra fabric hanging out too. All right that's two and this little dude here. Oh I think these are just gonna be really pretty pale and pretty. Uh, this this time I drew on the graph side but it felt a little weird. So I think maybe the other times I've used it, I think I maybe drew on the non-graph side. <laughs> so whatever. I was thinking maybe you draw on the graph side because you can use that as a guide. I don't know. So I'm just trying to cut on my lines as best I can. You could probably use a rotary cutter here if you really wanted these nice and straight or just, you know, perfect, but meh. I think we'll be perfectly fine. All right, so there's one, and there it is the other side. So that's our piece. Actually, I think it's like this. Oop. There we go. Like, that's our piece. These guys will toss. It's nice cutting just straight lines like this. All right, this is a nice, pretty fabric. This is our pop of color fabric, even though it's still pretty gentle and subtle, this fabric, but uh, I think with the, we're going to add that embroidery too, which will be more pops of color. Okay, that's two. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a whistler for sure. No, he's always whistling. I like it. Oh, we will, Grace. I'll say hi to everyone. Yeah, we'll be in northern Wisconsin. But yeah, you're right. I think um, the trees will probably just be starting to turn color. And I think we might get like a little freeze one of these evenings. Uh, or there, I think we're going to have a, uh, according to the news, widespread frost advisory or something. So I'm hoping that happens right before we go camping because then it'll kill all the bugs. <laughs> I'm kind of rooting for that. All right, here are cute little pieces. I kind of jumped the gun on these a little bit because I wanted to just do them. I thought they were so cute. So here, this will be our little um, parts of our, our applique. So uh, we got to cut out our white, our piece of white and um, get this uh, get this drawn on and then we can, we won't place them yet. Like I won't, I won't iron them down because in the, in the instructions she had that last 
but I will, you know, we can at least lay them down there so we can see what it looks like. All right, let me grab a cutting board and we will trim this. Uh, geez, it doesn't look like I ironed it at all, does it? Yeah, we'll cut from here. Um, she has us cut it uh, to seven inches. So this is like one of these things where we're cutting our block a little bit bigger than we need to. So instead of cutting it exactly that six and a half inches, we're gonna cut it seven because we're gonna be doing a lot of handling of it and the embroidery might scrunch it in just a bit. So if we lose a little bit, then, then we still have enough to trim it down. Okay, got a cutting board. Let's do our seven inches. So I don't have a seven inch ruler, so I'm gonna use a larger square ruler. And first I'm going to just make my, my edges nice. And I need a rotary cutter for that, here we go. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Crawl up here. I'm just gonna go all the way across. Okay, so now I have like one really good corner there. Uh, we're going to northern Wisconsin. I don't actually quite know where yet, Kim. Um, I gotta get directions. And so now I'm gonna rotate this down here. I'm gonna just trim off this little excess bit. Don't need that. And. Uh, now that I have this nice square edge here, I'm going to use that as my guide for the for the seven inches. So I always have to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Okay. We are good. We'll trim on there. You love the stabilizer with embroidery. Oh, because then you don't get the pu the puckering. Yeah. So normally I do use that that um, stick and stitch. I use it on the front so I can print my design right to it, but we're, we're going to trace the design tonight. I didn't think of using that. I could have used that for this design. Oh, well. I'm going to trace it now. All right. Well, there's a little bit of white. I don't think we can get another square out of this white, but we can still use it for piecing and stuff. But I got tons more white, so we will be plenty fine. All right, let's trace the design. I know it's a little bit wrinkly, but we're just going to live with it. Okay, so I got my light table out. It's filled with scissors and uh, our floss. Okay, let's get the pattern. So if you don't have a light table, you can uh, uh, use a bright window. You could also like put a I've seen people put LEDs or their, their cell phone actually, the flashlight on their cell phone and then putting like a casserole dish over the top and then tracing, just tracing through that, like making their own, um, their own light table. Oh, you're wondering because you're from Northern Wisconsin. Kim, I, I honestly have no idea where. <laughs> I think we're kind of going to be near the um, uh, upper Michigan, Wisconsin border, although I'm not quite sure we're that, that far up. Uh, Tracy, I have, this is, it's just called a slim light. This is so old though, this, this light table. Um, I just, it works still, so I haven't gotten a new one, but there are so many better light tables now. If you go to, um, I have a link, but if you go to Amazon and just type in light table or tracing light table, uh, you'll get them. They'll be bigger than this and uh, way thinner. So, I mean, this is actually thin. It's only like, it's like three quarters of an inch, but now they come like, nothing thin and um, and nice and big and you know cordless too some of them so uh, I would I would recommend taking a look at some of those but man they come in handy especially for this kind of stuff or anytime you need to trace anything okay so uh, I am going to trace this cute little fella uh, I'm gonna use this my little fine line uh, water soluble ink marker I think it bleeds a little bit which is going to be annoying, but I'm going to use it anyway. Um, all right, so how should we do this? You know what? I think I'm going to... Well, yeah, we're going to start with the kitty. 
I think I am going to mark my corners though a little bit and you know we'll mark all these lines too so all right let's just I'm going to lower this a little bit so I can see you guys' comments a little bit better oh you taped everything down oh that's a good idea you know what I'm going to do that yeah, exactly, Kim. They're only like $20 now, which is so ridiculous because when I was in school, first of all, they didn't make them this thin in school um, when I was in college. And the ones that, that were available were like hundreds of dollars and it was totally a luxury um, if, you had, if you had a light table. I am just, I am going to tape it on. So I have this, I have, um, you know, just uh, that blue... Um, you know, for painting, painter's tape. I'm just going to stick some of that down. And I am going to maybe stick a little piece onto my fabric here too. Yeah, just the, the for, keep the design from shifting just a little bit. I think I'll just put one at the top and we'll do the corners. I don't, I, I wanted to avoid this embroidery key just in case I accidentally, if it comes off, if I pull the tape off. I don't want to lose that key. So there we go. This should do. Uh, I have, it's the iron. There's a link to this as well in my post here, but it's the Panasonic um, NIWL 600. If you just type in, uh, if, well, again, it's easiest from the link, but if you type in just Panasonic cordless uh, 360 iron, they call it the 360 iron because it's um, it, you, you can't stand on it. You can press from either side because it's got a pointy end on either side. Yeah, I'm trying to go very lightly with this marker because if I stay in one spot, it just, I mean, it's really kind of bleeding right now. But oh well. Well, a little thicker lines and uh, I'll just, um, we'll remove them later. You know, you could also use a pencil to do this, but I'm using the water soluble marker just because um, then I can draw a straight line for for this running stitch and just go up the running stitch and then get rid of the, the thread later. All right, I think this is just like a little line there. Got the cute little whiskers. He is really cute. Chad, this is gonna be little Chad here. And you know, I can turn the light table off to, to check it a little bit, but eh, it's, it's bleeding a little bit, but I think we'll still be able to figure it out. And I can, you know, always look at this for a reference. But yeah, go check out um, Nicole. I'm afraid to try and pronounce her last name, but Nicole. In my head, it's Nicole from Follow the White Bunny. So follow the White Bunny. Uh, she does some really kind of neat embroidery. Like that painted embroidery almost because she's filling in the shapes with all, all sorts of colors and tiny stitches. It's a lot of work to do that and she does it really well the nice thing about having it all taped down is I can rotate it so it's easier to draw sometimes certain angles are weird to draw it it's easier to just rotate the work all right kitty you're done oh yeah I could embroider some stripes on him that'd be kind of fun I don't know, I think we'll just leave him. Little Chad. Chad's an outdoor kitty though. I don't know if how he would deal with um uh eh, I'm sure if he was inside long enough he'd end up on a blankie like this. I'm trying to decide if I want to draw the shapes of where um our appliques are gonna go, but I I guess I should. Okay, I'm just gonna kinda mark my corners though. Just um, so we have a little guide of where to cut later. I think we did that once before and it was pretty helpful. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's just draw this, I guess. I'm gonna draw as straight as I can. You know, really a ruler would work well here. 
see, do I have? Here we go. We're getting real, real picky here. I can get the ruler down here. Zoop. Oh, wow, yeah. That's easier. That's worth it. I approve. Use a ruler. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's easy. Zoop. Skip the kitty. Zoop. And it's faster, which is even better. Okay, let me turn again. Makes it a little easier. These are all just straight, it looks like. Oh, I'll go through the kitty again. Meow. This is one comfy kitty. Comfy little kitty. I miss Chad. I might be able to see Chad though uh, this weekend because I think we're gonna still drive down to my parents' house after the wedding. Uh, so hopefully Chad's there. I'll get to see Chad. All right, this is like a little, uh, I'm not gonna draw every single line. I just know it's a running stitch. So I'll, I'll skip the lines. I'm not gonna go and draw every single thing. I'm just gonna draw this general leaf shape this line through the middle and it has this little circle. When we take the, um, wa the, the water soluble marker off, then, you know, that's when we'll see our, uh, our dotted line versus solid lines. What about down here though? Should I draw each of these little pluses? I kind of think so. I could just kind of maybe draw a dot in the middle of each of these and then know that I have to cross over that dot. But you know what? I think I'm just going to draw them all in. I'm going to go ahead and draw dots. Might as well just draw all these pluses too. We'll go row by row just to make sure we get them all. You guys drew all the, all the um, pluses in? Oh yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Deborah. I'm, I'm tracing, so I'm, I'm missing a lot of your guys' comments tonight, so um, thanks for helping out. And if I miss it, just, just ask again if no one answers, too. Once I get stitching, then I can read, read some again. I would like to start stitching tonight, stitch something tonight. Um, we don't have that much time left, but we'll completely be prepared at least. So that's good. I'm not going to put in these stitch lines because this, these are the, these are the blanket stitches, um, where we're going to blanket stitch down our patchwork pieces. So I don't, I don't need to draw those on. Um, that's just a reference to blanket stitch. Let's just check before I take this off. Cute! Oh man, he is a cute little kitty cat. Little sleepy kitty. Okay, I think we're good. Let's remove our our um, little tapes carefully. I don't want to fray the fabric too much. But again, if it frays a little bit, we're going to be okay because we have that extra quarter inch all the way around. But this seems to be coming off really. Oh yeah, Nicole uh, from Follow the White Bunny. Uh, I have a link. If you go to the Splendid Sampler, she's she's the designer for today. So <laughs> I'm too scared to say this out loud. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but Follow the White Bunny is her website. Um, but yeah, uh, she's the designer for today. So at the SplendidSampler.com, there'll be a link to all her blog and her her, um, you know, everything else, social stuff. But yeah, I think she even teaches a class for that painted type of embroidery now. And, and her stuff is just always adorable. And I've been following her for years and years. So I was excited to hear that she was doing a block. All right, somewhere around here is our little fabric pieces that we made earlier. I just want to peek 
at what they look at. Man, the one thing about working in a small space, you just, stuff just gets spread out everywhere. So, all right, let's, I'm just gonna put this on the table here. Let's take a peek at what this is gonna look like. Oop, so this way, so this guy will go here. And uh, like I said, I'm gonna wait till we're done with the embroidery before stitching these down. And now that, now that we're this far, I think that totally makes sense. Like in my head at first, I'm like, oh, why aren't we doing the embroider or the um, putting these down first? But now I know why. It's because we're gonna be handling this so much doing the embroidery and this is raw edge applique. So every time we rub our hand against here accidentally, we might be fraying our fabric a little. So I think, I think that's why that's why we're putting it on after we're done with the embroidery, but I just wanted to peek. Ah, it's gonna be so freaking cute. This guy goes there. I think the little addition of the patchwork was a, a fun idea. Um, you know what? I think I'd like to do some embroidery tonight. I kind of want to, let's just do this, um, this uh, pink flower up here. I think that is something we could probably get done. And then I don't have to have this, um, pink sitting around anymore. Uh, let's see though if she, I think she said she does it one with one piece of thread. So this is six strand in embroidery floss. I think she's only using one strand. I usually use three, but you know, if you want a delicate skinny line, then you can use one and that's what this looks like. So how many strands you use determines how fat or thin your lines are. So she wanted a nice, pretty, delicate line, so I think she used one strand. I think I read that. Um, embroidered design using, yep, embroidered design using one strand of embroidery floss. So uh, she does stem stitch for the outline of the cat, and then everything else looks like it is a running stitch, and uh, then a blanket stitch around here. Uh, Jen, I think the book comes out in October, like mid-October already. So it's on pre-order right now, and... Uh, um, yeah, so soon. You know what? I have a good piece cut all here already from my little scrap bin. Um, there's three strands in here. I'm gonna just pull out a strand from here. Uh, you can just isolate one and hold the rest. It looks like it's gonna be a crazy big knot, but it'll all just kind of release once you pull out that thread. So, okay, I got my teeny tiny single strand. Oh, is it two, two strands for Oh, the grid crosses and the petals? Oh, maybe I just didn't read ahead far enough. Use back stitches for the eyes, straight stitches for the nose, whiskers and paws. Use, oh, two strands and a running stitch for the grid crosses and petals. Okay, perfect. Thanks, thanks, Laura. So, well, I got I got the one out of there, so now I'm left with two here, so we're good. Um, you know, that makes sense because she's using a stem stitch for the cat and a stem stitch just because of the nature of the stitch, it looks um, almost like double wide. Okay, let's grab a needle. I'm gonna attempt to do this with, with, um, oh, see, is she using 12 weight too? Am I just completely not reading the instructions at all? Oh no, it says embroidery floss. Embroidery floss. Yeah, nope, she's using, she's using embroidery floss, not, not 12 weight. You can use 12 weight though. Um, 12 weight, Diane, is, is perfectly, perfectly lovely and fine. Um, one strand of 12 weight is about equivalent to two strands of embroidery floss. So if you want the, a similar thickness, just use one strand. Use two for the cat. Oh, because you did yellow thread and one didn't show up. That makes a lot of sense. So if you're using like a paler, lighter color, make it a little more bold by doing a couple strands. That's a good idea. Okay. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this in the way where I just kind of let uh, about four inches or so dangle um, on the back side, and then I'll weave in that four stitches later. So let's see, what's the best way to go about doing this? I always kind of like to map it out. I think I'm gonna go around the outside of this petal and then maybe hit this circle and then go around the outside of all these other ones. Oh man, what's a good way to get... We're gonna have to come back for those stripes though. That's gonna be a bummer. It's always awesome when you map something out and you have just the, 
like the the map ends up where you don't have to stop or you don't have to jump around but this in this case I'm gonna have to jump around so let's I'm gonna start I think in the middle here all right and I'm I'm gonna kind of use my hands as my hoop so I'm just kind of holding it like that, spreading it out a little bit so it's flat, so my working surface is flat. I don't want it, you know, all bunched up like that. I'm gonna spread it out with my hands a little bit. Pull it through the back, and I'm gonna leave, like I said, I'm gonna leave a little bit dangle there. I'm just gonna kinda hold that down. All right, so a running stitch, the easiest way to do a running stitch, and this is what she's suggesting in her pattern here too. And it's easier with a loose loose fabric like this where it's not all in the hoop. It's the sewing method. So the sewing method is when you go in and out and in and out before pulling the needle through versus the stabbing method where you where you stab down, pull it to the back, come back up, pull it out again. That's the stabbing method. We're gonna do the sewing method. So let's just take little stitches and we're gonna kind of wiggle back and forth here. Ooh, my needle might be a little fat. It's having a little hard time going through here, but we're gonna keep using it, I think. So I'm just kind of wiggling through, and it, you know, once it gets to be like a lot in there, or you run out of needle, then just pull, pull the thread through. And there we go, we got uh, our, little, our little running stitch, our little dotted line, dashed line started there. So that's the, the sewing method, going back and forth like this. The stab, the stab method of embroidery, that's when you um, pick your, where you're gonna make your stitch, pull it all the way through, and then come back up. I actually really like the stabbing method, but I think Nicole's right for, for, um, uh, for running stitch in particular, the, the, the sewing method works great. Oh, Gretchen, that's a, that's a good plan. All right, so let's do the sewing method for this edge. Just back and forth. I'm gonna go about halfway, about right there. Pull these stitches through. And then I always kind of like, you know, stretch it out again to make sure I'm not bunching it all up. I think this is just going to be real subtle, this pink. I think it'll be pretty once we take that, take the stabilizer off. Or the, um, the water soluble off. All right, I think we're just going to keep going around, around the outside. There we go. That's one outside of a leaf. Let's do the next outside of a leaf. There, you can really kind of get in a groove. So I'm going to do this entire side. Yeah, a little one right to about there. Ooh, pull the whole thing through. Do a little stretch. There, it goes fast when you can do like tw six stitches at once. Or four stitches. <laughs> so if you, when you come up, if you just leave a little space, and then when you go down, if you leave a larger space, then uh, your stitches will be bigger than the spaces in between the stitches, and that's kind of a pretty look sometimes too, I think. All right, I think we're gonna, it's getting a little bunchy, so I'm gonna pull that through. I think it's gonna look cute. All right, and I think let's get two more little stitches in here. Kind of ending up at the back. All right, let's come up right here and 
go around this next little leaf. Oop. Oh, my little thread got stuck back here. Well, that's kind of what we want anyway, but it got stuck in a little, <laughs> little weird way. We're gonna have to address that later, but oh well. This is going to be fun to keep embroidering though. It's going to be fun to do little kitty. Oh, so just as a reminder, I keep my days are getting so, um, so messed up here lately. I forgot. So to, tomorrow's Friday. I'm not going to be here tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to be traveling uh, to, to that wedding. So um, no tomorrow, no Friday and um, no Monday probably too. Uh, just because I'm not sure I will be back yet. But I will be back on Tuesday, I'm pretty sure. And after that, after Tuesday, I will not be doing anything else for a little while. So I won't, you know, August and September have been like, I've been on and off here so much, like more than I ever have before, I think. So that's, that's gonna, that's gonna be done after uh, this, this weekend. So after this weekend, <laughs> I should be pretty consistent here again. Oh, Jeannie, you finished your kitty. Congrats. Oh, that's so exciting. How fun. Kitty done. All right, I'm going to just go around the outside of this last feller here, and I think we'll probably call it an evening then. Um, we'll finish up this, this, uh, this guy um, next time we work on on this. But I'm happy that we did those fabric pieces because now I have everything in order for this. And you know what? I think I'll I'll cut. You know what? I'm going to just throw all of that floss that I picked out. Um, I'm going to throw all that in the binder, in my um, binder where I store this, this project. I'm going to just put them all in there. I might cut off some of the gray because I think that's my only gray and I might use that later. But um, I want to keep, we spent all that time picking those colors. I want to keep, keep those colors with the project even. Um, though I'm not going to work on it for a little while. All right, this is our last little bit. And then we'll, we'll call it an evening. But yeah, this method really does go quickly. I, I think it's harder to control the size of your stitches and everything with um, this sewing method, but with a running stitch, you can get a groove going and then then the stitches will end up being a similar length and it's you know really not the end of the world if it's too different. All right, I think I'm gonna end it there. I have like one more stitch, but I'm gonna do that stitch as I start the next area. I think it's gonna be pretty cute. We'll take the needle off for now. Let's take a peek at it. So it's really difficult to tell what it looks like without, I mean, with all this blue all over it, but we'll take that off when we're done. I think this block in particular will, after we're done stitching it, will maybe wet it right away and um, get rid of the blue lines on there. But he's cute. It's actually kind of cute if uh, all in blue, this would be really pretty, um, like that, that blue, like a dark blue on, on white, just all one color would be kind of fun. But all right, guys, uh, we're, I'm going to call it a night there. I'll flip it around so you guys can see and um, get a little close-up of the stitching here. And we'll call it. Hello. Oh, you couldn't stand to wait for this one because it was so cute. I know. Isn't this it's just cute? I'm, and I'm still baffled that out of you know 80 designers, there was no kitty last time around. So I'm very, very happy to have this kitty. But look at my little pink stitches there. I think it's going to be awfully sweet. And I think this is going to be really cute. Yeah, like look at it with that color in there. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. I can't wait till it's a finished block and um, it's sewn into our, um, you know, when we do that, uh, when we free motion quilt it. I don't know how we'll free motion quilt this one. 
Ooh, maybe that's where we can add some stripes to the kitties or something like that. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, that'll come up soon here, too, when we start free motioning all of these together for the quilt as you go. So I'm, I'm stoked for that. I'm hoping to start working on that next week, actually, the quilt as you go part of this project. Um, so yay, we'll pick out some blocks and start that uh, when I'm back here on Tuesday, I think. So awesome. Uh, oh, thanks, Don. I'm gonna, um, I'm, you know, worried about this camping thing, but I think it'll be fine. It'll just be a couple nights. <laughs> Uh, so, all right, guys, I will get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies, and uh, then uh, I will be here again on Tuesday. So have a great weekend, guys. Have a great Friday tomorrow, and I'll see you then. Good night.